Welcome to another episode of Review Advent Calendar 2022. And this time around, we're going to check Yoshiki Nakajima's Pride. This is a song performed as part of You Make But As a Solo Song. And this was a suggestion by Hugo. And let's check it because this is quite the surprise for many people. And when this song was released, many people were actually curious to see how this would fare on a live setting. I can tell you that having watched the live performance, Yoshiki Nakajima actually impressed everyone with a dance on stage. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Notice how his voice in this song is completely different from his voice in all other songs by You Make. He's not deliberately performing in a higher key, he's actually performing in a lower I wouldn't say not necessarily a co more comfortable one because he is a tenor, believe it or not. But he is performing, he is performing in a lower range than usual for you make songs. He is doing that on purpose because this song has a really, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily a sexy vibe, but it is close or leaning towards a sexy vibe. So he needs to have that edge, that playful yet alluring edge on his vocals and he's accomplishing that effortlessly and yet again he's adding a lot of vibrato smooth vibrato to his performance it is not necessarily a blasting vibrato that resonates he leaves a little bit here and there and it is quite smooth the way he does that <laughs> So, so clean in his vocals, so, so groovy in that section, or should I say, the pre-chorus to this uh, song. And now you are going to listen to how Yoshiki Nakajima would sound like if he was a solo artist, because this is quite intense. This is a massive reason why I continue to say that he should make a solo debut. Instead, he was... Uh, more inclined to found uh, his own rock band, Sir Vanity. But still, I'm hoping that he gets to make a solo debut because this performance shows just how talented he is and how he could shine as a solo artist. <laughs> As someone that is quite a big fan of Yoshiki Nakajima's voice and pay closer attention to his uh, singing more than anything, um, and simultaneously someone that pays a closer attention to Gakt's performances, I do see a lot of similarities by fanboy Nakajima. Is uh, actually bringing a lot of that edge that Gakt adds to his songs, the way he prolongs or adds a legato to his vibrato, the way he intentionally makes it sound sexier than it would usually sound, and how he makes the best out of the skills he has when he's a tenor and has to perform as a four baritone. So he's using a lot of that skill set that he may have lent from uh, being a big fan of Gakt and actually listening to a lot of it and taking as an inspiration as a fellow tenor how he should sing. Um, and that's really uh, what I see in there, what I hear in there. And it's quite awesome how he can emulate that and make it his, that so few people actually notice it when they are listening to the performance. <laughs> uh, 
really hard hitting snare. Boom! Boom! It sounds almost like a cowbell, uh, how uh, that uh, snare was basically tuned. <laughs> Notice how he does legato with vibrato. Doesn't sound really uncanny with some of the skills that Gakt has. For me, it does. <laughs> Really funky guitar riffs as well. If you haven't been paying attention to those, those guitar riffs are really, really funky, really, really awesome, and a blast to listen to. They serve as a way to accentuate that sexy vibe that is going on in the lyrics and in the performance itself. Let's not play games. This is really a sexy song. So, um, And Yoshiki Nakajima is not really uh, masking it at all. Um, so it is really nice to have that edge with the guitar sounding quite uh, playful at times, but then they are sounding quite alluring at others, and in a way they are complementing the vocals. <laughs> Dance break, in case you are wondering, yes, I've watched the live performance, and let me tell you. <laughs> And back to the guitar that opened the doors for this song, as well as that shot in the dark. Mm. <laughs> The confidence entering these last chorus, the <clears throat> the clearing of the throat that s sounded so so confident is such a nice twist, uh, such a nice touch to the performance, and it will it will go almost unnoticed for many people. But he was clean, clearing his throat almost too confidently as he was strutting towards something. How he plays along or how he plays around with uh, tempos is quite interesting and how he plays around with his voice is also quite interesting. He's going for uh, from a really good tempo on his vocals and then he adds some low slow legato and then he's back to full speed again and then he goes again through a low slow legato and he adds that in a way to make you crave for more it is quite ingenious the way he does that he makes you want him that's really a skill uh, so that's a performance that shows a lot of confidence by the singer. And I do love when singers are this confident about their vibe or their sound or their music. And in this case, you know that Yoshiki Nakajima is really prideful about, of course, pride. <laughs> 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 
so much talent. In one, in what is one of the most creative talents among my LCU? Yoshiki Nakajima really is in a league of his own. He is a fantastic designer, fashion designer. He, he draws really well, he sings really well, he's a really good dancer. He idolizes Gakt and at the same time Mamoru Miyano, so he is really having the right influences, he has the right skills, he has a lot of sensibility as a lyricist, as a singer, as a composer. He's really, really gifted. And I would love to actually have him debuting solo, but that seems like a distant dream right now that he is really busy with uh, Servanity. But still, Pride is a good example of what he could do if he was a solo artist. And I believe that would be insanely good. You listen to this. This is a showcase of confidence. He is not really shy about it. It shows his personality a whole lot, which is also really, really fun to to see it in f music format, his personality and what he thinks about himself, his music, and, uh, of course, uh, his whole vibe as a singer. So it's really, really awesome. I do love this song a whole lot. I feel like this is a song that is quite unappreciated uh, because it is in an album that is mainly jazz music, and you make are not a really popular band or unit uh, among CU fans or 2D music fans, so that's another another issue in there as well. But if you do have the time, do check uh, Pride by Yoshiki Nakajima. It's in um, the album by You Make called Tripper. It's the, the, the most recent album by uh, You Make, and it's really a treat. Uh, it's quite uh, classy, elegant, and showcases really well the talents that each of their members has and how well they work together as a unit. In this case, Pride by Yoshiki Nakajima shows how much talent he has, how technical he can be, and what he can pull off if he actually gets the chance to be alone on stage. And let me tell you, this is the kind of performance that you want to check how he performed live because he was dancing along to this song. He had a choreography for this song. So do check it if you can, if you do have the DVD uh, or the Blu-ray from the You um, Makes a Live event. I'm not recalling the name of the event, but it's in one of the most recent uh, live uh, event DVDs. And with that, uh, thank you very much to, and let me check your name, uh, Hugo, for the suggestion of Yoshiki Nakajima's uh, Pride. This is a fantastic song, uh, easily one of my favorite songs by You Make, when it's not necessarily You Make. And it is a song that showcases just how talented Yoshiki Nakajima is and why more people actually should pay attention to himself because whichever project he touches, he usually leaves a really awesome mark. So thank you very much for uh, suggesting this song and thank you very much for watching this episode and I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you soon.